So we have been preparing for this trip for six months and uh, finally are here in warm Southern California. I kind of had to pinch myself looking around the room from face to face today thinking we're finally here and it's so exciting and we couldn't have gotten here without your help. So thank you so much for making this dream a reality. Thank you donors, without your help, we wouldn't have been able to get another student here and this is just a great experience, so thank you. Thank you all the donors who helped support all three of us students to go instead of just the two. It's a great experience to be able to bring the entire team. The next three days here at Caltech I think are going to be more intense. We'll be getting into more data and be figuring out how we want to do our ratios for some of our graphs. So it'll be some problem solving. We'll be getting more into detail about the different sciences and background knowledge. So today we listened to a big lecture about the basics behind the science of the project. And then this afternoon we actually started looking at the data downloading process. Hopefully soon we'll be able to start crunching some numbers and maybe make some graphs and start looking at some celestial bodies. And the NICAP program has been operation in various forms at the Spitzer Science Center for over 10 years now. What we want is to particularly get the educators, but as well as the students, to really know what scientific research is by doing the research. What we want is for people to understand the research process and then apply it to their lives. And then when it comes to all of the scientific questions that come up in a very scientifically complex life that we're leading now, then they can apply those techniques to understand it. But at the same time, also particularly for the educators, this sets up a connection between a NASA scientist and the educator. I think it's a responsibility for those of us that are in these specialized fields particularly publicly funded specialized fields, to pass on the knowledge, pass on the ideas that we acquire here to everybody else who is willing to listen and who is willing to participate with us. One of the amazing parts of this experience has been the generosity of people like Rujan who donated so much of their time to training us, to re-explaining things and then explaining them again, to sharing not just their office space and, and resources, but their expertise. And that has been just a generous gift. The campus here is really beautiful. They've incorporated nature and a lot of trees. It's very nice out here on campus. You can walk around and we've already seen some lemon trees and the architecture is really fascinating as well. Today, just walking in, we stumbled upon a tent and noticed that it was a poster session dealing with astronomy and we were able to stop and take a look and envision doing our posters and uh, presenting them at the American Astronomical Society meeting in Seattle in January. Just random coincidence and made it seem like we're just surrounded by, you know, cutting edge, world renowned astronomical research. This is exactly the kind of thing I can never achieve in a classroom. California was amazing, especially to see how actual research is conducted. We got to go out there and meet with a real scientist and learn his method to approaching a real scientific problem. So I thought that was just great. And we got to see the uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory and that was amazing to be able to see how all the science and the research that we're doing is actually used in the real world and potentially even a future career for one of us students. While we're in California, I was really struck by how quickly our three students who have had no physics, who have had no calculus, who have had no astronomy, <laughs> how quickly they grasp these really advanced technical concepts in astrophysics and instrument-specific details of this type of cutting-edge research and instrumentation. And then we're able to apply that and start doing work making decisions and participating in discussions and helping other people understand and catching mistakes. Our, our team did really well. So Aspen, Ted, and Caden were just awesome. They were impressive. So the analysis part of the project has just begun and we're finishing the first phase. The initial verdict does indicate that first of all our data is good and we started with millions of objects and we're down to about 46,000 analyzing those objects that are different than the others. Those objects that place themselves on the outside of our graphs and our extreme for whatever reason. So our first real step now that we're back from California is looking through some outliers and determining whether or not to throw them out from our data. We set up a system whereby different schools around the country and the different teachers 
and the different students are all doing the same work. And we're looking at the objects that are not quite fitting into the expected behavior we anticipated. We've been looking at some of the outliers of our data and figuring out which ones we want to use and which ones are actual objects. The color color plot's a way to put all of the stellar objects onto a graph based on the ratio of their wavelengths of light or their color. And we're gonna track the objects that are actually real onto color color plots and then we'll continue our research from there. We find that most of those are real data and that's exciting news, these are real objects. What we don't know yet is what type of objects they are, and that's coming next. We have categories to place them into, which will be the final resource to make this tool incredibly useful for future scientists. And a generation of scientists can use this catalog to speed them on their way to their own research projects, working with infrared access objects. All the five schools will be collecting all the data together and analyzing it and then writing up everything for the poster session and compiling it all together to make the poster for Seattle. In Seattle, we expect to present our project, have a board with all our scientific research outlined and our results. And while we're out there, we'll hopefully go to a couple lectures by some scientists. The final component will be presenting that, polishing, publishing, maybe presenting what we found. So we're asking you once again, to help us by contributing some money to cover part of the cost for one of these students to attend the American Astronomical Society Winter Conference in Seattle in January 2015. The educators, their schools who supported them to come out here, the parents who supported their children to come out here, all of them are vital to the program. You cannot just do it with just a mentor without educators or educators without the support of their schools or the students without the support of their parents. Students have done amazing work and your generosity has been incredible. We need to finish it up and get all the way to Seattle to complete our mission.